everyone, it's Frankie Lou. I'm coming to you today from the kitchen of the Grow Together Homestead where I want to talk to you about one of my favorite subjects, milk jug planting. I thought it was time to do a little update for those of you who were trying it for the first time maybe this year. Now first up, milk jug planting. This is not something that is terribly new. It was invented some time ago by a wonderful woman named Trudy Davidoff down in the U.S. We have a very short growing season so I thought maybe this would be one of the reasons I couldn't do milk jug planting but actually now that's one of the reasons why I do do milk jug planting because while we do have a short se season and these seedlings do take a while to get going, every little bit that I can do to help extend my growing season, because honestly, sometimes I have just over 60 days between frosts, I wanna do everything I can and milk jug planting sure helps. Whereas some winter sowing takes place directly in the beds where you're gonna be leaving seeds and that's great for some things, but I found that I can get away with planting a lot more using milk jugs than I can do just doing winter sowing out of my bed. First off, milk jugs. This is my favorite thing to use so far. I have done some experiments with some other um, different containers and some of them are great, but honestly, if you're gonna get started, this is probably one of the best things that you can get started with because it is has such a high success rate for a lot of new beginners in this technique. And also for those of us who live in Alberta and lots of other places in the world, these are readily available. I like using these because I'm upcycling something. I'm gonna use it in a, one more time before I take it to the recycling depot. I do recycle these once I've used them for one season. I have found that with milk jugs, th this exposure that we're gonna give them to the elements does cause that plastic to become brittle. And I usually can only get away with one, maybe two uses of this before it starts to fall apart. Okay, so in preparing your milk jugs, first off, I just collect these throughout the year, okay, and I keep them away from the elements down in my crawl space, and there's quite a collection growing there, okay? You want to rinse this immediately after using. Now, there's a few things we have to do to prepare this jug so that something will grow and thrive in here. First off, um, you want to punch some drainage holes. This is how I do it here where I am. If you live somewhere where there's a little bit warmer, you might find that there's some benefit to putting some drainage holes in the top. Since I get frosts well into May and June, I have found that, that um, I didn't need that extra heat release that comes punching them in the top. Okay, so what I like to do is in each quadrant, oh, <laughs> my favorite punching device. Okay, it's a corkscrew. Um, I have been using this particular corkscrew for years now. And I just find I've got a lot of control with this, all right? So I enjoy it. I do have a tool that I use outside that's uh, when I'm doing mass plantings, but for this, when I'm working in my kitchen, I like my corkscrew. I know a lot of people use heat guns that they've heated up and they punch holes. Some people use drills. So I've got 12 holes in the bottom here, three in each of the four quadrants. I also like to poke holes. slightly above, like maybe half an inch to an inch, a few holes on each side as well, just for some excess drainage, because one thing you don't want to happen is you don't want to have any water logging occurring. Now you notice that I did the holes first. Okay, so we've got our drainage. That's essential. The only time I've ever truly killed some of my plants in the milk jugs is when I forgot to do that, because when you're doing a whole bunch at once, you might forget. Now, the next thing that I want to do is I want to cut the bottom, leaving the lid in place with a hinge. So what I do is I take where the handle is and right below it on either side, I pierce a hole, okay, with, with a knife. Now, I want it to be right there, okay, and, and you obviously don't want to connect Okay, you wanna leave this space, okay? And then you're gonna take some scissors. And you're gonna cut meat up. Okay, and there you go. You have a nice hinged space. What you've created here is a wonderful little mini greenhouse, okay? We're gonna put, 
put seeds and soil in here. And this is going to protect the seeds, seedlings when they come up. And you're going to find that it's just going to give you that little bit of extra. The same as you would if you were to do it inside under lights. There's many reasons that I really, really love planting this way. One of them is I don't like to mess with all the lights and the electricity and the hardening off outside. This makes that redundant. I basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these outside in the snow and let them do their own thing for quite a while. Once I start opening these things, I do need to do a little bit of maintenance every once in a while because um, this little mini greenhouse will maintain the humidity in the chamber so well that I will have to water very little, particularly if I got my placement correct and I've got this outside somewhere where it's exposed to precipitation, okay? You want these to be exposed to snow and you want them to be exposed to rain once that starts and sunlight, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put some soil in here. I get asked all the time, what's my favorite soil to use? I have played with lots of different kinds over the years and I am pretty much have settled on this Pro Mix organic veggie and herb mix. I find that it's nice and light, like a seed starter, but it has enough nutrition, okay, that it's going to maintain my plants until they're ready to go into the ground. I'm not gonna have to do any potting up. One of the reasons why I love milk jug planting is it saves me so many steps. So what I need to make sure is that I'm planting this in something that has some nutrition in it, not so much that it'll be too rich for the, for the germination, but rich enough that it'll maintain those seedlings. And I just find that this mix has been my best bet so far. So I have taken some pre-moistened soil here. Very important that that soil is wet and like pretty darn wet when you put it in there. All right. And I want to bring it up as much as possible so that there is some chance for great root growth. I do really like this soil because I find that the root growth I get out of it is excellent. So what I want to do is I want to get nice deep. Some that's one of the um, errors a lot of first time winter sowers make is they only put a tiny little bit of soil in the bottom, like an inch or two. I try to bring it up so that it's basically just under an inch from the top and I want it pretty firmly in there. Okay. So that there is lots of room for that root growth. When I'm putting my milk jugs out into the snow banks, I basically have a calendar that I follow where I start with hardy perennials first. So stuff that I know would survive here in zone three um, that I put out first, okay? And I actually here in Calgary area where we do deal with Chinooks, I do not start this winter sowing process until mid-February. Now the reasoning behind that is there's an awful lot of very, very dramatic temperature fluctuations that occur in this region due to Chinooks, okay? So it's not the cold that's a problem here. It's the sudden rising temperatures because what I don't want to do is I don't want these jugs to come out of dormancy. I don't want those seeds to start sprouting until the appropriate time because there's nothing worse then putting some stuff out, like let's say I put some of these out today. And I'm, I'm telling you this story because this has happened. And um, I have an extended Chinook, like a Chinook period that lasts over a week with temperatures above zero every day for over a week. Some of these seedlings will start to come up. And then we'll have the inevitable drop down to seasonal temperatures where it'll be minus 20 for a week. And all those seedlings, even in this little lovely um, greenhouse chamber, wouldn't survive, okay? So here in the Calgary area, I don't start until mid to late February with my hardy perennials. And then I move up to my hardy annuals and vegetables. And then by the end of March, beginning of April, I'm working on my tender stuff, okay? Tender annuals, tender vegetables. All right, so today, just for demonstration, if, if it was mid-February, I would be putting out this packet full of stuff. I've got some lovely licorice mint here, okay, which is super, super hearty. Um, another good choice for first time is poppies and hollyhocks. 
I've had never had the kind of success with growing these that I have with the milk jug planting, okay? They work really, really well, okay? Wildflower, local wildflower blends, great to use because those are things that are gonna come up. Anyways, it's like a Southern Alberta wildflower blend. I know it's gonna do really well in here. Okay, chives, that's a nice hearty perennial. So those are the sorts of things that you wanna get in there first. Now, if you didn't live in a Chinook region, you could be putting those things out now, okay? Because they're all gonna come up at the same time. But if you wanted to get some planting done, you need to get your hands dirty. I completely get that. You could get away with putting out some of these hardy perennials now. I'm gonna wait a few weeks until I know it's a little more consistent in temperature. Okay, now when you're putting your seeds in, try to follow the seed packet as carefully as you can. Um, I know that a lot of people, what they do the first time is they tend to over, over plant. Okay. They're a little bit, I know it can be hard to believe that this is going to work. So you might not think, oh, you might think you got to put more seeds in, but really you're only creating more work for yourself later on in the game when you're going to have seedlings just bursting to get out of here and you're going to have to do a lot of untangling of roots and stuff. So do try to follow the planting instructions in here. Okay, now this is telling me that I want a quarter. These are some chives. It's saying that I want to plant them a quarter inch deep. So what I, what I like to do with seeds like this is, okay, I'm going to give it a light sprinkle. Okay, you don't want to overdo it. And you want to make sure those seeds have contact with the soil. And I'm just going to put about a quarter of an inch of soil on top. It's pretty simple, okay? Now, another really essential part of dealing with this is labeling correctly. I used to use Sharpie, okay? Um, because it goes on all great, all services, and I thought that was great. But um, I often end up playing the mystery garden game because Sharpie doesn't hold out. Even, even the ones that are supposed to hold up to all elements, they don't hold up very well to Southern Alberta elements. So now I tend to use more of these paint pens. Okay, just get them at Michael's. It's, a, it's just basically an acrylic paint pen. Okay, and I label in multiple places. All right, I like to label inside the jug right near the hinge. I've just found that sometimes that one will last longer <laughs> than some of the ones on the outside. I also label at the top and I label down here in the bottom as well. Okay, now I also put on the date, all right? And so the variety that I'm using, the date. And when you're dealing with like a vegetable seed or a flower where you've only got say eight or nine seeds in here, I usually put the number that I've placed in there so that I can check and see what my germination rates are like. If I put eight seeds in there and seven came up, I'm pretty happy, okay? That sort of thing. Now I also write a chart and keep a chart of what I'm putting out when. That's been very helpful for me over the years to determine what's the best time to get stuff in and out, okay? And um, then what I wanna do is I wanna tape this up. Now, this is another thing where you want to make sure you're not cheaping out too much, okay? Like you're already saving so much money by using this container that's upcycled, right? It's free. So don't, don't buy the dollar store duct tape it will not hold up, okay? Also, don't buy the really, really, really strong stuff, which I did last year on a few of my jugs thinking, oh, let's try this. It ended up being too strong and I had to cut open the jugs, okay? So good old duck tape, you know, from Canadian Tire that says duck. That's what I found is in my best bet for getting these jugs done, okay? So what I've done, is I've taped it up along here, all right? And now I have a nice little jug to place out in a snowbank. Now that might sound a little crazy. You're gonna go put it in the snow, but actually placing it in the snow, being exposed to the elements, is gonna give these seeds, especially the ones for those hardy perennials, 
because a lot of those need cold stratification in order to truly germinate. They need a little bit of a cold period. So putting it out in the snow is a good thing because that's causing that cold stratification to happen. So you might find you get better germination rate. Now, the other thing that you're going to want to do with placement at the beginning of the season, I really, I go out and I put these, nestle them down deep into a snow bank. Okay. And with the melts that do occur here in Calgary, I actually will shovel snow onto these throughout the season. Okay. I group them close together. So they act as an insulating batch altogether. Okay. Like that might not seem important, but there's multiple reasons why that is. You want to have this exposed to the elements. We deal with a lot of wind here. If you have your, if you have a group of 20 jugs grouped together in a nice snowbank, they're gonna, they have a much bigger chance of surviving a gust of wind and not getting blown away than a single one sitting out together. Okay, so you do want to have it exposed to sunlight. I usually do place them so that they're south facing and I nestle them all in together and I basically just leave these, okay? It's going to be, you're going to want to, you're going to find that you're going to be checking these very, very frequently to see, is there something coming up? Is there something coming up? Nothing will be coming up until it should be coming up. So honestly, don't expect to see any action in here for months. So you might be asking yourself, why am I doing this now? Why wouldn't I just start doing stuff in March and April if I'm not going to be seeing anything until then? Well, there's multiple reasons, but I can tell you one of the things that I love about this is it reduces my workload. At that time of the year where I've got so much going on, I don't have to worry about checking, watering, a whole bunch of seedlings under lights, moving trays around. I can peek in here every once in a while, lift it up. If it feels light, I stick it in a basin of water to water it and I walk away, okay? And so that's great. You don't have to harden off with this method. What happens is once you find that the daytime temperatures are consistently above zero and you can open these up and they harden off on their own, okay? So if you've ever gone through the whole nightmare of bringing trays in and out of your house, okay? You don't need to do that anymore with this method. And even if you do have to move these for, for one reason, there's a great big difference between grabbing six jugs all at once and moving them and individually picking up six trays worth of seedlings had far less damage because this protects it not just from the um, elements but also my own clumsiness. If this knocks over, it's not going to be as drastic as if I tip over a tray. Okay, so <laughs> for me as a clumsy, clumsy person, that means something. Now, another reason I love this is also that lack of work and the fact that this this is much more um, forgiving of neglect than your trays under lights in the garage would be, say. I actually had a very serious accident at the end of May and did, they were completely neglected. Nobody looked at them, nobody did anything with them for almost three weeks. I lost very few, okay? This is a far more forgiving method of getting your seedlings going than some of the fussiness that, that goes on underneath lights inside, okay? So that's a long, 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 long winded video. There's so much more to talk about. Um, and I do have several other videos on the channel that explain things like placement, dealing with watering, dealing with more details, but I did want to give a little recap. All right, I hope you'll give it a try. This has been life changing for, for me here on the homestead because I have so much going on and every year I get to expand my garden easily because the seedlings are taking care of themselves and their little jugs here, okay? And um, if you're interested in seeing how more about this and other things that we have going on in the homestead, please do subscribe, okay? Because there will be tons more milk jug planting videos coming out. And as always, I hope you take this chance to grow together today. Have a good one.